Ban on comic book due to content, not political sentiments. Government wants involvement on refugee status, check. Hello and good evening and welcome to News on 2 with me, Mohamed Amin Carlos. Now, copies of the Belt and Road Initiator for Win Winism comic book will be seized if it is still in circulation following its ban after authorities found that it contained elements of propaganda. Well, according to the Home Ministry, the decision was made after a detailed study and that the ban was not because of any sentiment or action against any political parties. Home Minister Tansri Muyirin Yasin said his ministry had studied the comic in detail and found that, among others, it tried to promote communism and socialism. Kita dah teliti dan kaji dan memang ada asas kukuh bukan kadar apa-apa sentimen ataupun tindakan terhadap mana-mana pihak hanya berdasarkan konten apalagi telah diadakan dalam negara dan lepas itu dibantar ke sekolah jadi isu ini telah menjadi satu perkara yang agak serius Asked if the comic book was still available in schools he said he had given the authority to the education ministry to confiscate the comic books Well, on a separate matter, Tansri Muirin said the government is currently in negotiations with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, for government agencies to participate in the process of determining the status of a refugee implemented by UNHCR. Well, he said the move was aimed at ensuring that the country's interests, especially security, were given priority. I would like to emphasize the importance of this strategic bersama pihak UNHCR dalam pertemuan saya dengan pesuruh jaya tinggi UNHCR Tuan Filippo Grandi di Geneva, Switzerland pada 8 Oktober 2019 bau-bau ini. Speaking at Minister's Question Time at the Dewan Rakyat, he also said the National Security Council, MKN, was improving and updating Directive No. 23 in order to secure a more comprehensive policy framework on the management of illegal immigrants holding UNHCR cards and asylum seekers. Well, based on Directive 23, he said the government allowed the cardholders to stay temporarily in the country using a case-to-case -case basis. As of 30th September, the UNHCR Kuala Lumpur Office had recorded 177,943 UNHCR card holders from 57 countries, with the highest number of immigrants are from Myanmar with 153,591 people, Pakistan 6,495 people, and Yemen 3,568 people. The Sultan of Iran, Sultan Nazrin Moizuddin Shah, today urged the accredited mosque committee members or religious speakers to relinquish their posts if they have political agendas and ambitions that will lead to the abuse of the sanctity of mosque. Well, he said the individuals should be honest, sincere and honorable enough to resign from their respective posts instead of being a thorn in the flesh. Sultan Nasrin also said the enemies with the greatest potential to tarnish or defile the mosque and to divide the Ummah were those with excessive divisive political activities. <laughs> Sultan Nazrin added the fragmentation of the Ummah because of the culture practice to attract, influence and gain political support was against the Islamic teachings and values. Sultan Nazrin said this when officiating the 2019 state-level mosque committee conference at the Kajo Arena at Maru Convention Center, Ipoh. 
Now, the working paper on the Rahmatan Lil Alamin policy based on Mukhasid Sharia will be tabled at the cabinet meeting tomorrow before it becomes a government policy. Now, Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Dato Sri Dr. Mujahid Yusuf Rawa, said the ministry has informed the young Dibitwan Agong, Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Bila Shah, of it, and His Majesty has consented to the government's move to promote a work culture based on the Rahmatan Lil Alamin approach. Yang lebih utama pada mesyuarat Majlis Raja Raja ke 254 pada 4 Julai 2019, Majlis Raja Raja telah memberi perkenan kepada dasar baru ini yang telah kita persembahkan dan dimaklumkan kepada Majlis Raja Raja. He said this at the Minister's Question Time session at Dewan Rakyat. On the measures taken by the government to promote better understanding of the policy among the people, Dato Sri Dr. Mujahid said information sessions will be held in various states, including Malacca, Perak, Selangor and Kedah, while state programs will be held in Kelantan Federal Territories, Negeri Sembilan and Perak. The scheduled water supply, or BAB, in Johor, which began in September, will end this Saturday. Now, Jack, Johor Exco Jimmy Poah Hui Su said water supply will return to normal in all parts of the state, especially Kota Tinggi, Kluang, Pontian and Mersing due to the beginning of the monsoon season. Well, Jimmy Poah also hoped for the rain to increase water level at main dams and rivers that were previously affected. However, he also said there are several dams and rivers that have not reached stable and normal levels. So current readings of Sungai Gambut that supply raw water to the Sungai Gambut water treatment plant in eastern Johor was at 0.22 meters compared to the normal level of 0.77 meters. Sungai Sedeli Kecil that supplies raw water to the Lok Heng plant recorded a current reading of 1.53 meters compared to the normal level of 2.75 meters. Matab Dam which supplies water to the Simpang Rengam plant recorded 14.38 meters compared to 16 meters and for the Labong Dam which provides raw water to the Endau plant recorded 5.07 meters compared to the normal level of 8.42 meters. The Johor Exco also advised consumers to plan their water use regularly and prudently especially at residential and commercial premises. The Malaysian Armed Forces ATM has set up a special team to review the Standard Operating Procedures or SOP of training to ensure no recurrence of such incidents like the accidental death of Army Commando Major Mohamed Zahir Armaya in a demonstration exercise in September. However, Defence Minister Mohamed Sabu said live bullets will continue to be used in demonstrations exercise to maintain and increase the competency of the forces. Dari segi risiko latihan menggunakan peluru hidup, pihak kementerian tidak menafikan risiko yang terdedah kepada anggota yang terlibat dengan latihan sebegini. Namun ianya adalah setimpal dengan hasil yang diperolehi berdasarkan kemampuan 21 grup khas menyediakan pengawal dan anggota berkenan tinggi dan bermotivasi untuk terus melaksanakan misi khusus dan strategik negara. Justru itu, latihan sebegini akan diteruskan bagi mengekalkan dan meningkatkan kompetensi pasukan khusus. Muhammad Zabu added that a probe by the army found the Zahir incident to be a relatively isolated case with the last such accident happening some 15 years ago. He also noted that the probe was also found that the SOP was followed during the live firing demonstration. He said this in his reply to a question from Bagan Dato MP, Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahir Hamidi. The Election Commission EC is prepared for any eventuality such as adverse weather conditions during the Tanjung Piai by-election. And in the event of a disaster, the EC will act promptly to ensure the safety and comfort of voters. State EC Deputy Director Mohamed Zaidat Abdul Samad said collaboration and asset assistance from security agencies were also carried out for the convenience of voters. Dan Alhamdulillah, uh, pengawal pengurus bagi P15 Pontian ini, uh, Tanyu PI, di Pontian ini adalah pegawai daerah sendiri. Yang mana pegawai daerah adalah pengusi yang terkasa bencana banjir. Jadi kita dah bersedia sebab dengan uh, pegawai pengurus sendiri, RO, adalah musim bencana. So kita langkah dalam sejati ini insyaAllah untuk menghadapi sebarang kemungkinan lah. 
He was met after monitoring a briefing session for duty officers for the by-election in Dewan Jubli Intan Pontian. The Tanjong Piai by-election will be held on 16 November, while nomination day is set for 2nd November. It is held following the death of incumbent Dato Dr. Mad Farid Madrafik, 42, who is also Deputy Minister in the Prime Minister's Department on 21st September due to heart complications. In a related development, Zaidat said the EC has sold six sets of nomination forms for the Tanjong Piai parliamentary by-election as of today. He also said the forms were purchased by representatives or agents of major political parties. However, so far no parties have made their deposit payments for the by-election and campaign materials. The state EC director further noted that the nomination forms can still be purchased until nomination day on 2nd November at 10 a.m. Mohamed Zaidat added any party who wished to contact contest in the by-election could check their eligibility at the nearest returning officer's office from 28th to 30th October. Thanks for staying on. Now the country's tallest skyscraper is ready to take in tenants from December. Namboliat Property Development Cindy Yuan Burhard's General Manager of Property Management, Patrick Honan, expects Exchange 106 to easily compete with other similar landmarks globally. We take the time to understand the market and we build a solution that we see that fits the needs of our clients and our tenants. Um, we will see the occupancy increase, we'll see dramatic moves again in occupancy once the full TRX development is complete. At the moment we have uh, HSBC are building their regional headquarters, a FinBank are building their regional headquarters, yes. Lend Lease is building the uh, TRX Exchange Mall. Um, the, we have uh, uh, condominium developments coming up uh, uh, by different developers also on the complex. So there's a lot happening in the net that will come online in 2020, 2021. He also said that Exchange 106 received its Certificate of Completion and Compliance, or CCC, from local authorities earlier this month. Patrick further noted that the Exchange 106 is expected to be second to none and is benchmarked against international properties such as the Shard, buildings in Canary Wharf, both in London, New York's One World Trade Center and Shanghai IFC. The government always supports every business efforts made by local entrepreneurs without any discrimination. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Dato Sri Saifuddin Nasichon Ismail said this is in line with the government's stand to promote Buy Malaysian Made Product campaign. However, he wants all industry players to create a healthy business environment besides ensuring competitive pricing, quality products and services, prioritizing halal elements, and respecting consumer rights and preferences without any monopoly. Replying to Burra MP Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob about the boycott accusations on the Buy Muslim Made First or BMF, well, Dato Sri Saifuddin explained that he had never mentioned the word boycott at all. Tidak langsung ada perkataan boikot dalam jawapan saya. Tak ada. Saya juga percaya sahabat saya Bera pun tidak keliru. Sebagai sebuah negara yang didiami oleh pelbagai kaum, saya fikir usaha untuk mengangkat usaha semua pihak. Kalau di sana ada usaha yang dimulakan oleh usahawan Muslim, kita akan ikut mendukung. Kalau di sana ada usaha baik dalam sektor perdagangan runcit atau borong atau F&B yang diusahakan oleh rakan-rakan bukan Muslim, kerajaan juga akan ikut mendokong asal menepati prinsip dan dasar yang telah saya gariskan. On the impact of the campaign, Dr. Sri Saifuddin said he had no data yet since it was only launched in July. Well, a total of 9.54 million ringgit worth of drugs seized from five cases in Pulau Pinang last year were disposed today after receiving a court order. Acting Chief Assistant Director for, for Feature of Property of the Bukidama Narcotics Crime Investigation Department, ACP Dalbir Singh Tana Singh, said the five cases involving the drug weighing 227,829 kilograms had been tried in court. He said all of the drugs were handed over to Quality Alam Sindirian Burhan for disposal using the latest facilities in line with the Department of Environment of DOE standard. Itu syarikat Quality Alam di situ dia ada dia punya tempat incinerator dia di mana dadah ini akan di dipuskan dengan cara incinerate di situ. 
So hari ini kita dah telah saksikan bicara di mana penyerahan ekibit yang telah selesai bicara dan ini akan dibawa ke situ untuk dipuskan atau sebagainya. He was met after the disposal of drug case at the Pulau Pinang Contingent Store, Seberang Prai. A Singaporean man was charged in the magistrate's court today with the murder of his wife and stepson in Batu Berenda, Melaka, earlier this month. A food delivery rider Shahrul Nizam Suraimi, 31, was charged with the murder of Nur Fazira Bidin, 27, at a house in Taman Merdeka Jaya, Batu Berenda, between 9 p.m. 6 October and 1 a.m. 7 October. Now, the man is also or was also charged with the murder of an 11-year-old boy on the same date and at the same time and place. The charge under Section 302 of the Penal Code provides for the mandatory death sentence upon conviction. Now, no plea was recorded. Magistrate Muhammad Nazrin Ali Rahim said 16 December for mention pending the post-mortem report. The prosecution was conducted by Deputy Public Prosecutor Anis Najwa Nazari. Shahrul Nizam was not represented. More than 3,000 cartons of liquor and 8,160 cigarettes were seized by the Royal Malaysian Customs at the Customs Inspection Bay in Pelabuhan Tanjung Pelopaso, PTP Glangpata, on 15th October. Well, a local man aged 29 was arrested. Now, Johor Customs Director Dato Muhammad Hamidin Mariani said all of the seized items which were not taxed were worth about 470,000 ringgit. Well, the seizures were made after customs officers inspected two containers from China. Now, Dato Muhammad Hamidan was met at the PTP Customs Enforcement Branch. The arrested man was later released on a bail of 50,000 ringgit. Now, the case is investigated under Section 135, Subsection 1, Subsection A of the Customs Act 1967. But first, Tour de Slango, or TDS, is back for its second edition with participation from 120 riders representing 20 top Asian continental, local, national and state teams. Well, the race organized by the Slango State Sports Council will take place from 18th to 22 December this year. Memang kita planning setiap dua tahun sekali sebab kita tak nak clash dengan uh, sukan Sukma yang kita rancangkan pada alternate two years. So at least di negeri Selangor bila Sukma berlaku tidak adalah TDS. So, the five-day race will cover nine districts of Selangor, including Pulau Indah, Cyberjaya, Subang, Selayang and Shah Alam, where cyclists will be passing through some prominent and iconic spots in the state, covering a total of 716 kilometers. The objective of the race is also to invite more competitive and established Union Cyclists Internationale or UCI professional teams to compete with the national, state and club teams. The five-day race is expected to attract 100,000 spectators daily and it also aims to unearth young cyclists able to represent Salango as well as the nation in the future. And that concludes this evening's News on 2. Now, top story, ban on comic book due to content, not political sentiments. News on 2 will be back at 12.30 tomorrow. Till then, I'm Abad. I'm in Carlos. Thanks for watching. Bye.